And we're back. For those of you just joining us, welcome to the Eric Frazier Show, where we talk about faith, family, and finance. And today, we're talking about attitude and its correlation to faith. And I, I really believe, folks, that um, your attitude is directly correlated to your faith in God and your faith in yourself. And when you have faith in God, if you truly believe who God is and what he is doing in your life every day, then you can believe in yourself. You can believe in you because he's equipped you with everything you need to succeed in this life and even life after death. And so I wrote a poem about this, uh, feeling low myself, you know, running into a few block walls and stopping me from doing what I needed to do. And I had to change direction, which is another thing. Just because you can't achieve a particular goal doesn't mean that you can't achieve uh, the goal at all. It just means you may have to go in a different direction uh, you may have to have a different strategy, but you can get there. You got to believe in yourself. So this first poem is titled, I Believe in Me. It's in the uh, book of poetry uh, that I've written. I got three books of poetry, Ice Cream, uh, Barbershop, and The Angel's View of Calvary. And this one is in Ice Cream. It's on page 49. Uh, you can get this at the Amazon Books and other places online. It's called Ice Cream. And again, it's on uh, page number 49. I believe in me. Nappy hair, brown eyes, big lips. I believe in me. Big butt, short legs, and pot belly. I believe in me. Black skin, no ends, and major sins. I believe in me. Four eyes, nine lives, and talk and jive. I believe in me. It's God, you see, who helps me to accept me, to believe that I can be whatever my mind chooses to be. There is within me a desire that God gave me to see what others cannot see, to be what others dream to be, to run as far as I can see, to climb every mountain that stands before me, to love my family and people close to me, to love those who hate me, to help others who come to me. Why? because I believe in me and the power that lives in me. He supports me to be all that I can be, to strive in spite of what I see, to live by faith that I can be whatever I want to be because I believe in me. I believe in me, folks. Page uh, 49 and 50 in Ice Cream, Poetry and Many Flavors. So I really believe in me. And I don't believe in me because I'm I'm arrogant or uh, what's the word what's the word I'm 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 uh, narcissistic I, you know I'm I, it's none of those things I, I believe in me because I believe in God and I just believe that He loves me that He is going to give me the things that I need He's going to give me the desires of my heart and He's going to be what I need not necessarily what I want He's going to guide me like any great parent is going to do to guide their children to success in this life. He put me here for a purpose. He did. He put me here for a purpose that I might be able to achieve great things. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk in that power and achieve great things. Okay, the next poem is called Attitude. It's in the Barbershop book. Barbershop, poetry in many styles. Again, it's available on Amazon and other places. And uh, it's uh, called po Barbershop, Poetry in Many Styles. And the poem's on page 18 in the book is entitled Attitude. And this is how it goes. We've all heard the saying that attitude is everything. And that attitude affects your altitude. And I would concur with both statements, but there is something else I think we should consider. Having a great and positive attitude is critical to your success in life and in business. A poor attitude can affect your interpersonal relationships at home, at school, or the workplace, and potentially be the primary cause for an improper response to a relative, a neighbor, a customer, employee, or boss. Ultimately, it will have an adverse effect on your effectiveness as a person as a leader, as a follower, as a witness for Christ. So what's so unique about a positive attitude is that it's something that everyone can have. And yet, you cannot get it at the best universities. You cannot get it from the greatest parents in the world. No one can force it on you, nor can you even buy it. You see, what's so special about a positive attitude 
it is that it's something that resides in all of us. And we decide to turn it on or to turn it off. A positive attitude is a decision, a decision that should be made despite whatever challenges life holds in store for you each and every day. A decision that is not subject to predetermined events or dictated by the attitudes of others. When you wake up in the morning, first decision you make among the numerous decisions you will make before you even leave your home is whether to be a positive influence and a source of motivation for others or a negative influence and a source of anxiety for others. It is a critical decision that only you can make today and it will affect everyone else around you, your wife, your husband, your father, your mother, your sister, your brother, your employees, your boss, your students, your teachers, your neighbors, your friends. Make a decision today to be positive today. And every day as you work very hard to achieve positive results for your life and for your business and for your family and the pursuit of excellence. Attitude, it's everything. I hope you enjoyed the, these uh, first two poems, Attitude and I Believe in Me. And I hope that this video is a source of uh, encouragement to those of you who may be dealing with an attitude challenge uh, or problems, and you just feel like there's, you know, there's no hope, but there is hope. There is hope. Just start believing in God and you'll start believing in yourself. The final poem is about homeownership. And as a mortgage professional and a real estate professional, uh, I, I speak to people every day about homeownership, and there's so much negativity out there. I mean, everybody is crying about high interest rates, and you know, you just need to look at the history of interest rates to know that this is not the first time that we've experienced extraordinarily high interest rates. And people are complaining about property values are so high. I mean, I have to catch myself sometimes complaining about it. And while I'm complaining about property values so high and where I'm going to live, I'm living in a house that's worth far more than I ever could have imagined because of inflation. And so I believe we just have to, as is the situation, you know, we really do. You cannot control the past. It's gone. There's nothing you can do about the past. You should have bought back then when, when rates are low. Well, you didn't. And so what? You did. All right. And you can't worry about the future. I mean, will interest rates continue to rise? They probably will. Will property values continue to rise? They probably will. But you can't focus on the future. That's just going to bring anxiety and, and depression. You just got to figure out what can you do right now? What can you do right now to make homeownership reality? Maybe you need to partner up. Maybe you need to fix your credit. Maybe you need to get a better job. Maybe it's not right now for you, but perhaps in a year or two or three, when you're in a better financial position. The one thing you don't want to do is get a negative attitude about it because it is never going to happen. I'm telling you right now, just accept your circumstances where they are and work on improving them because homeownership, I'm telling you right now, is at the door. It really is. You're, you're right in the path of where you need to be if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Now, let me encourage you to stay on the path and to be focused about it uh, with this poem called Homeownership. I love this poem. I read this before every first time homebuyer seminar I do, and I hope you enjoy it. Homeownership. This is on page 67 of the book, Barbershop Poetry in Many Styles. Homeownership brings stability to individuals and families who have never had a dwelling place that they could call their own. There's something special about real estate that's unlike anything else on earth you can possess. Real estate you own is not like a car that will decay over time and you have to replace it. Real estate you own is not like clothes that go out of style and you have to buy new ones. Real estate you own is not like expensive vacations or experiences that only last a moment in time. Real estate you own is not like an apartment where the landlord increases rent until it's unaffordable. Real estate you own is not like staying at your parents' house where you know you can't stay forever. Homeownership is the beginning of wealth, wealth that increases over time, becomes your estate and legacy. Homeownership is the pride of a mother nurturer. The kitchen is her domain. Homeownership is the pride of a father, provider, and protector of his territory and family. 
homeownership is the foundation of permanence, place where life happens and birthdays are celebrated and death is mourned. Homeownership is a place where you build memories, memories that can never be taken from you, etched in walls and concrete, experience in rooms and floors and living in trees and shrubs planted by your own hands. Homeownership is the manifestation of you, your style, your colors, your smell, your stuff, your junk, your memories, your yard, your spaces, your life. It is the height markers on your first child's bedroom wall. It's the hearts drawn in the concrete slab when you porch your patio floor. It is the birthday parties and anniversaries in the living room and kitchen. It is a backyard barbecue with friends, neighbors, and family connections. It is a high school and college graduations and wedding receptions. It is a family nights and block parties and the fellowship of family reunions, home ownership. It's more than real estate, land, brick and mortar, wood frame, construction and chicken wire. It's more than money saved and gifts and grants received. It's more than the debt you incur to buy it. It's more than the payments you make to own it. It's more than the appreciation that comes with keeping it over time. It's memories. It's family, it's life that can happen in one place that you own until you say it's time to move. Home ownership. Well, that's it, folks. Thank you for uh, listening to me today on the Eric Frazier Show. And I, I trust that I've encouraged you, that I have um, inspired you in some way. And I'd love to get the feedback. So put something in the chat room, like it, share it with others. Let me let you feel what, what you like about the poem. Uh, I, I hope to be bringing more of this to you on the Eric Frazier Show, where we talk about faith, family, and finance, and occasionally some other things as well. Well, remember, we are at our best, and we maximize our success when we act now. Be present. Be present. Believe in God. Believe in yourself. And just know that you can do anything that you put your mind to and that you believe in. Thank you for watching. Have an awesome day. The Power Is Now magazines are the leading resource for real estate agents, mortgage bankers, entrepreneurs, and small home ownership businesses, providing leaders with business strategy information, resources, and tools through PIN, Real Estate, Programming Guide magazines, Stay up to the minute with real estate news and information from industry experts. Subscription is free. Sign up today. Thepowersnow.com. Thepowersnow.com.